Hi, I'm Priyanka Vergadia, and this is AI Simplified, where we learn to make our data useful. We're helping an imaginary company that is in the process of building their machine learning workflow. And to accelerate AI innovation, they're looking at Vertex AI, which provides tools for every step of the machine learning workflow, from managing data sets to different ways of training the model, evaluating, deploying, and making predictions. In the previous episode, we started by looking at the first part of any ML project, the data sets. Vertex AI supports managed data sets for image, tabular, text, and video data. In this episode, let's move further in the ML workflow and talk about building and training the models. The managed data sets we created earlier feed directly into the model building and training. Although you can bring external data sets while building the model, managed data sets bring some added benefits as I laid out in the previous episode. We have two options to train the model. We can use AutoML, which allows us to create high quality custom models with minimal effort and machine learning expertise. And the second option is to write custom model training code where you can run custom training applications in the cloud using pre-built containers of your own. Now, when should you write your own model code and when should you choose AutoML? It depends. So let's see. If your use case fits a supported AutoML offering, then starting with AutoML is a great choice. And these use cases include cases where you have images or video classification or object detection, text classification, entity extraction from the text, sentiment analysis of text, tabular regression, and classification. But if it does not fit any of those categories or your model takes a mixed input type, such as you have images and then the metadata is in the form of text, then it makes sense to use custom model. The other technical factor could be that you have specific requirements for the underlying model if you need control over your model's architecture, framework, or the exported model assets. For example, maybe your model needs to be built in TensorFlow or PyTorch. Then you use custom model. Otherwise, for the basic use cases, just use AutoML. The next factor could be how experienced is your team with ML and AI. If you have a team with limited machine learning expertise in building custom models, then exploring AutoML makes sense before looking into the custom model code because it is the lowest barrier to entry. Another deciding factor could be your team size. Now, if you have a small data science team and less machine learning expertise in that team, it perhaps makes more sense to work with AutoML because custom model code would require more time and maintenance. And use AutoML if you want to develop a quick initial model to be used as a baseline or a proof of concept, which could eventually end up being your production model. But if you're looking to improve on your existing baseline or heuristics, then you might want to write your own custom model to test out the possibilities. Hopefully, these factors have clarified which path to take when it comes to building the models. Now, let's see how to build and train the AutoML model using Vertex AI. With that, on to the Google Cloud Console. We learned how to create data sets in the previous episode, but for the sake of completeness, let's create a data set. In this example, we are using credit card fraud detection data set available on BigQuery public data sets to create a credit card fraud detection model. I have included the link to this data set below if you would like to follow along. Once the data is uploaded, we can analyze our data in the rows and columns. Right from the data set details page, we can select train new model. Define our objective, which is classification here, since we are labeling examples as either fraudulent or non-fraudulent. This is where you decide whether you want to use AutoML or custom training. In this video, we are focusing on AutoML, so we will select that. Stay tuned for the next episode where I will cover custom model. Next, we give our model a name. Under the target column, we select class. This is an integer indicating whether or not a particular transaction was fraudulent, zero for non-fraud and one for fraud. 
In the advanced options, you can specify a specific train test split if you don't want Vertex AI to handle that automatically for you. In this case, we're using the random assignment, but you can also specify this manually when you upload a CSV of your data, or you can have the data split chronologically if it has a time column. In the Choose Training Options section, we will go to the Advanced option. And since this data is heavily imbalanced, less than 1% of the data here contains fraudulent transactions, we will choose the AUC PRC option, which will maximize precision recall for the less common class. In this case, we care more about ensuring our model can classify fraudulent transactions correctly. Now, the last step is compute and pricing. Here we enter one as the number of compute hours for our budget and leave early stopping enabled. Training your AutoML model for one compute hour is typically a good start for understanding whether there is a relationship between the features and labels you're selected. From there, you can modify your features and train for more time to improve model performance. Then we are ready to start training. From here, we can leave the UI and we'll get an email when our training job completes. All right, so our model is ready. Let's explore the model evaluation metrics. We head to our model tab and evaluate the model we just trained. There are many evaluation metrics here. We will focus on two, the confusion matrix and feature importance. A confusion matrix tells us the percentage of examples from each class in our test set that our model predicted correctly. In the case of an imbalanced data set like the one we're dealing with here, this is a better measure of our model's performance than overall accuracy. Remember that less than 1% of the examples in our data set were fraudulent transactions. So if our model accuracy is 99%, there is a good chance that it's just randomly guessing the non-fraudulent class 99% of the time. That's why looking at our model's accuracy for each class is a better metric here. The confusion matrix shows that our initial model is able to classify 85% of the fraudulent examples in our test set correctly. This is pretty good, especially considering our significant dataset imbalance. Next, we could try training our model for more compute hours or gathering more training data to see if we can improve that from this 85%. Now, this shows us the features that provided the biggest signal to our model when making predictions. The feature importance is one type of explainable AI, a field that includes various methods for getting more insight into how an ML model is making predictions. The feature importance chart is calculated as an aggregate by looking at all of our model's predictions on our test set. It shows us the most important features across a batch of examples. This chart would be more exciting if most of the features in our data set were not obscured. We might learn, for example, that the type of transaction, transfer, deposit, etc., can be the biggest indicators of fraud. In a real-world scenario, these feature importance values could be used to help us improve our model and to have more confidence in its prediction. We might decide to remove the least important features next time we train a model or to combine two of our more significant features into a feature cross to see if this improves our model's performance. We are looking at feature importance across a batch here, but we can also get feature importance for individual predictions in Vertex AI. And we'll see how to do that once we've deployed our model. Now that we have trained model, the next step is to create an endpoint in Vertex AI. A model resource in Vertex AI can have multiple endpoints associated with it, and you can split traffic between endpoints. On our model page, there is Deploy and Test tab. There we click Deploy to Endpoint. Give your endpoint a name like Fraud version 1 or 2, and then leave the traffic splitting settings as is, and then select a machine type for your model deployment. We used an N1 high CPU 2 here, but you can choose whichever machine type you would like, including one with GPUs. Then select Done and click Continue. Leave the selected location settings as is, and then click Deploy. 
Your endpoint will take a few minutes to deploy. When it is completed, you will see a green check mark next to it, just like my version one here. Now we are ready to get predictions on our deployed model. There are a few options for getting model predictions, the UI and the API. Let's check out both one by one. On your model page where your endpoint is shown, scroll down to the test your model section. Here, Vertex AI has chosen random values for each of our model's features that we can use to get a test prediction. You're welcome to change these values if you would like, and then scroll down to the bottom of the page and select predict. In the prediction results section, you should see your model's predicted percentage for each class. A confidence score of 0.99 for class 0, for example, means that our model thinks this example is 99% non-fraudulent. The UI is a great way to make sure the deployed endpoint is working as expected. But chances are that you will want to get prediction dynamically via a REST API call. To show you how to get model predictions here, let's set up a notebook. For that, we navigate to Notebooks option and select TensorFlow without GPUs. Once created, open the Notebook instance, and then we open Python 3 Notebook from the launcher. In the Notebook, we run the command in a cell to install the Vertex AI SDK. And below that, we add and run a new cell and the example from our test set. Next, we need to create the endpoint object and then change the endpoint ID and project number to your specific endpoint. You can get the endpoint from the URL and the project ID from the project dashboard. We use that to make a prediction request to our endpoint. And we see our prediction around 0.99 for the zero class, which means the model thinks there is a 99% chance this transaction is non-fraudulent. With that, we've learned about the two options to train our models in Vertex AI, AutoML and custom training, and when to use which one. Then we went into the console and trained an AutoML model from scratch. In the next episode of AI Simplified, we will look at building and training a custom model. In the meantime, let's continue our discussion in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to catch that next episode.